Damn. Wow. The police passed me to Larry Gabi. Lame by the He said, I didn't tell you to have that baby. When I saw this, I don't know about you guys. When I saw this, I just, I kept thinking, you let him hear you are. I was just waiting for the music to come in. <laughs> a big part of me feels like this is a skip, right? But then the police would have had to be in on the skip. And I feel like the acting was a bit too good. Even from the lady who ends up helping her, she's almost a little bit stunned when she sees what's happening and she's like, and then she goes to help. I don't know. The acting would be too good for this to be a skit, in my opinion. But this is absolutely diabolical, okay? And this is what the world has become. When we say chivalry is dead, now, me personally, I'm not this cold, okay? I would have helped her. I would have helped her. But, man, the way the guys were looking at her, like, where your baby daddy at? Where's your husband? Why are you dragging? First of all, America, don't you guys have lifts? We have lifts in every train station, so the woman with kids can just... She's dragging it up the stairs? Oh, man. This would have never happened 50, 60 years ago. I can guarantee you that. You know what I'm saying? Under the patriarchy? Oh, man. This would have never happened, but... Thank you, feminism. You made this possible. Men are not nice people. And they're getting worse by the day. Like, I'm not lying. Men really just love getting their ego struck by women. Like, it's ridiculous. Like, go heal. Go, go, go get some therapy because I'm not the female to stroke your ego. I'm just... Modern woman translations, okay? The men that I keep finding are not nice people. They need therapy. They want their ego stroked. And I'm not that type of woman. Nah. Like, manipulators. And it's like, y'all do that to women that are really good people women like they're really nice human beings and you i really think that guys be like i want to take advantage of her because i want to knock her off her pedestal and i want to humble her because she thinks she's you'd be surprised how jealous men can really be they don't like seeing strong women they want to break you like that they want to like lower your self-esteem all of that it's sickening and psychologically men know exactly what they do when they like literally chase women in the beginning and you know switch the roles and make the woman feel like less of a woman and make i keep getting manipulated none of my relationships are working out it must be because i'm a strong independent queen and they hate me it's the only reason I can think of. The woman chase them and make a woman feel like she's crazy. They know exactly what they're, they know that it's a psychological thing and they feed off that shit. I don't, I don't have guy friends anymore because usually my guy friends just, they want to fuck me. And then the guys that I, I give a, a chance to, it don't matter if it's a nice guy, if it's a, if it's not a good, a good guy. The ones, everyone that I've gave a chance to, they always have some type of like, but like motive and it's it's weird it's very weird men are not nice i don't care what y'all say the shit that they do to women i can go on for days i can write a book about how i what situations i've been through in my 29 years of life damn you can write a book at 20 29 anyways anyways that's what I said, every single man i've dealt with has been terrible that must mean that every single man it's terrible because it can't be me. I've never seen nothing healthy. And a lot of people say, oh, it's just some inner work that you got to do. Bro, don't tell me that. Don't talk to me about self-improvement, you pussy. It's all the men. It's not me. Self-improvement? I'm an independent queen. I've tried that. I've literally, no, it's never me. And I'm that type of person that's, I don't care what nobody says, it's not me. I feel like. <gasps> oh! She can't 
try but take herself seriously. She's smiling because she knows she's full of shit. <laughs> I do everything right, but they're gonna say, "Oh, you're doing it for the wrong man." Then show me the right one, then, okay? It's just men in this generation. They're very evil spirited. Like this is what they like. This is what they like. They like a woman to chase them. They act like the females nowadays. And it's very weird. Really trust your gut. I am a strong, independent woman. Why do I keep attracting feminine men who want me to chase them? I can't understand it. Trust your intuition. Don't ignore the red flags. If you feel like he has a girlfriend, he has a girlfriend. The first time he do something weird, cut him off. Literally, don't waste your time. You're too beautiful. Your time is too fucking precious. And it's not worth it, bro. Please, like, and they have show you, they have put it right in your face. Don't ignore it. This is coming from somebody. <laughs> Like, and I don't feel like it's like, and I don't be like, we as women to be like, oh my God, like, what did I do something? Is there something wrong? No, it's not you. It's literally not you. There's nothing wrong with you. It's them. And they have a them problem. Like, that's just what it is. Men are not nice. And another thing, y'all, they never go anywhere. That's the thing. But don't let that, like, like, don't use that to your advantage. Knowing that, leave them the fuck alone. Don't just cut them off don't have nothing to do with them if you know in your mind like oh he'll be back okay yeah he'll be back because he know that she lost out on some it's never your loss but don't use that for to your advantage and don't like be like oh okay he he gonna keep coming back to me so i'm gonna keep taking that no that's that's not okay like that's really not respecting yourself Knowing that, just be like, oh, yeah, I got you wrapped around my finger. You thought I had you wrapped around yours, motherfucker. But you're going to keep trying and you're gonna always spin the block. But I'm not going to keep, I'm not going to, like, let you in my car if you spin the block. Now that I've become so traumatized, I'm going to raise my standards to a level. And I am going to nitpick at a level that is going to keep me single forever. Okay, one red flag and I'm out because mentally I am fried from all these dating experiences. Will I go to therapy? <laughs> why, why, <laughs> why would I do that if I'm not the problem? That will be no damn sense. Okay, I'm going to be me. Okay, and all these men are trash. So I don't know if you guys remember a video with a white woman who said the N-word very casually in a story that she was telling. It, it had me a bit, I was like, wait. Wait, wait a minute, okay. Um, she ended up getting fired from her job for being a racist. Uh, rightfully so. And um, everybody's basically clowning her. So y'all remember this girl, you know, the girl that decided that, you know, she's going to tell a story and call everybody her friends were dating some broke ass ninjas. Yeah, guess what happened? They fired her ass. <laughs> They blew up her job. They found out where she worked and they blew up her job, baby. And she doubled down. This was her double down video because they made her take the other video down. But she had the nerve to double down and didn't think nobody was gonna find you and locate your job. I even called your job. I sure did. I called it. That thing is blocked. You can't even leave a message. They blew up your job. She this is what happens when you spew hate on the internet. It lasts forever. Good luck finding another job because as soon as they see your face and other people see your face, they're going to come back to these videos that are saved forever and people shit. And you're gonna lose that job too because no one wants a racy individual at their establishment. I wanna make sure I can articulate this properly because a lot of people get situations like this messed up, in my opinion. They get confused by free speech. And they get confused by the fact that they are working for privately owned companies the majority of the time and are on privately owned platforms. During COVID, everybody had to wear a mask, but it started to ease up, right? So some people weren't wearing masks, some people were. And you would see people go into privately owned businesses without masks. And they would say, if you come in here, you have to wear a mask. 
And they'll say, no, it's my right. It's my right. I don't have to wear a mask. You are in a private business. You must adhere to their rules or leave. You can step out and not wear a mask. But if you step into my privately owned business, you have to wear a mask. I don't give a damn about your rights or your freedoms. When people come onto privately owned platforms and be racist or say crazy things, number one, that privately owned platform has every right to kick you off. That's number one. And number two, when people call your job and they say, are these the type of people you want representing you? Your job has every right to fire you because you are a representation of your job. Your job isn't the real world where you can say the N word as a white person and not get thrown in jail or not have any repercussions. They are a privately owned organization who have a reputation to uphold. So again, this woman was rightfully fired. And I find it very interesting. Let's look at Let's look at her doubling down on what she said before she was fired because she thought she was invincible. So a recent video of mine seems to have um, upset members of a certain community and it this um, all the backlash just really made me, you know, just really do a deep dive, like do a soul search. And after all that, I still couldn't find a care. Is this your first public interview? Yes, I had to save it for my favorite Emperor Wars warrior. Oh, well, thank you very much. Well, we're very honored. You know, if you want to live in a free country, freedom of speech is the most important part. That's the only way you can preserve the rest of your freedoms. That is the fundamental freedom in this country. And it's really under a victim these days. Like everybody wants to be a victim. And so, you know, there. let's be real. There's not a lot of racism in this country. There is racism in other countries, but I won't mention that because we're talking about America right now. But in America, you're pretty damn lucky to be, you know, born in this country and that's my opinion on that so you know people can take a word out of context and they love to do that and they, so they have to have a racist so i'm a perfect racist for them you know what i mean so the idea that because of free speech you should be able to say anything without repercussion has to be the most binary level of thinking it's the dumbest shit i've heard like you're an American. African Americans only got rights not like eight years ago. You know the history of the word. You know what? You know what? Like, let's not act like you don't know why people would be upset with you saying that word as a white woman when white women owned forty percent of slaves. Like, like, am I am I tripping? Oh, free speech. That is the dumbest shit. That that cannot be your argument. Because that means you take nothing else into context. That's crazy. Uh, uh, that, that's crazy. Stepfathers are not real fathers. They're assistant mothers, which is fine. Mothers need assistance. <laughs> like that would like, I'm, I'm pro mothers getting assistance. Right? I just don't confuse a step parent for having the authority of the actual parent. The step parent's job is to help the actual parent. The other parent's job is to help govern the household and share power with the actual parent. There's an important difference. There's an important difference, and I don't want to confuse one for the other. I agree to a large extent. I think this is why the stepfather roles or the stepfather relationships, I should say, that work, generally speaking, are the ones in which the mother gives that man full autonomy to raise that child like it's his child. Because what you don't want to be, you don't want to be in a situation where you can't shout at the kid, you can't discipline the kid, you can't do nothing. The kid's turning around telling you, you're not my dad. What? But you're out here with all the responsibility. No. I have a girlfriend. Seven and a half years. Are you planning to marry? Yes, uh, we will marry uh, this year. But why it took so long that it took like more than seven years to propose here? Um, because I'm 30 years old um, and my girlfriend is 23 years old. She's 23 and you're dating for seven years? You were somewhere like... 16. Okay, uh, 16. 15 and a half. 15 and a half. 15 and a half. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know it. We get 
together. Um, yeah, I um, knew that she was only 16. Yeah. So everything happened, and after that, she shared her age. Wait. You thought she was 16, but she was 15. Huh? Yeah. And how do you feel? Um, at the first time, bad. But after I think a little bit about it, um, I felt good because uh, the relationship felt good with her. And um, I don't think age is that much important. Ah, uh, Kelly, come get your boy. Now I'm blowing up your phone